So at the moment, as we're approaching this headland here, do I have to do anything right now? Nothing at all. Nothing. Absolutely. We're peaking too soon here. I feel like we're peaking too soon here, David. Don't we're showing them off all the tricks here. Don't touch anything. I'm not touching anything. There's a hedge in front of us. Gentlemen, hello and welcome along to another episode from LandPowerTV.com. This time you find us out with the Deutz Fire crew near their UK base uh, in Daventry. And we've kind of come along to sort of see where the manufacturer is up to in terms of its developments in its sort of upper mid-range tractors. And as an example machine, you find us on a, uh, it's a 6230 TTV, is it? It is, yeah. So this has got the continuously variable transmission in there, which is just one of many updates you've got. So we'll set off, David, shall we? So what's the crack? What's the procedure? Well, we've already got a little bit of work land here, so we'll um, carry on from here. What we need to do is pick up our next line, which is just one beyond where we are. Yeah. So if you uh, hold the consent button yeah. and the forward, you've got... Hit forward on that. So you're already selected forward. So just put your foot on the drive pedal. Right. And then you can hit the cruise speed. So cruise number one. And then you can sit back and enjoy the rest of the day. And that's it, is it? Well, we've got the, head, <laughs> we've got the headland trigger that's going to lower the machine into ground. Right, so that's... I'm not even dropped. The machine it's done that because you've set a virtual boundary is that we've correct? got we've got boundary to the field we've got an inner headland boundary and the new headland management system's got a, a gps trigger which we've activated and that's going to raise and lower your cruise speed and it's going to raise and lower your implements we could we could add other functions into there as well so at the moment as we're approaching this headland here do i have to do anything right now nothing at all nothing absolutely we're peaking too soon here i feel like we're peaking too soon here david don't we're showing them off all the tricks here don't touch anything i'm not touching anything there's a hedge in front of us it'll move is he gonna do it <laughs> oh it's like witchcraft and if you look at the screen which the tractor's possessed if you're looking at the screen yeah, now, yeah. you can see where we started earlier on yeah yeah i'm gonna pick the last remaining track to fill in between here right there we go and hopefully behind us we'll be seeing that they will implement <laughs> down cruise speed engaged she's off again that's it right so that's this bow complete you might say so what's it going to do it's going to go uh, over can there you, can, can you see now that it's going to come along the the darker line it's yeah, yeah. the headland turn is created it's for that darker line and then it will go the opposite direction on the next turn right there we go because we actually unfairly started in the middle of the field, it might, it might just have a hiccup on this next. Um, yeah, well, it's my fault for interrupting it. But so. the, but don't <laughs> worry, we have the options to um, override any headland turn it's suggesting yeah. to us. We might say no, we want to take a left turn this time instead of turning right. a right turn. Look at that, and it's we're sort of approaching a headland now on a big angle, sort of yeah. like that, and it's worked out the radius it needs yeah, to turn and all that because what we've put in there is what the potential radius is for the tractor yeah and we said how close to the edge of the field we wanted to get to yeah so it, it knows its limit to what it does and it works its way through look at that i assume you'll have put in the implement dimensions they, they, they automatically um, structured the working widths and everything yeah so here we've got look at that so we're dropping back in again and next time, what I'll do, I'll take you through to the headland management screen and you'll be able to see that working. Yeah. So as we're crossing that line, there's our headland trigger. She's off again. Yeah, see, well, can you see now it's generating a left-hand turn? She's gone for a left-hand turn. Because we're on, a, we're on an infill pattern. We've, right. We've, we've asked it to create an infill pattern. You can do alternating patterns. You can say, I want to skip two rows, three rows. You know, obviously, the, the larger the working implements, the, the easier turn that you want to do. Yeah. Right, so we're coming up to, it said, we're going left now. Right, that's okay. And here we go. And it gives you a little warning, distance yep. to the headland. And there's lots more, you can, you can give it longer distances, you can set how far that warning comes. But it's when you're watching your Netflix and you just want to get your eye in <laughs> and stuff like that, you can... Look at that. So it skipped a few bouts there, one, two, three, four it skipped, back into it. 
dropping into work. Uh, and no, notice the coverage doesn't happen until we go back into work. That's it, yeah, yeah. And it's already plotted where we're going to go yeah, next. So it, it shows you that. So if I can let me just um, bring this screen over here. This is our headland management. And right. this is a process that you can see is going to happen. So next time it'll do is this first function, yeah. which is on the GPS out of work. Yep. And that's going to lift the machine up. And also it's going to stop the cruise control. And then because we've got the headland turning automatically set, it's going to then take the next trigger, which is the GPS into work. Yeah, yeah. And then it's going to lower the machine and then reset the other cruise control. We've had a very, very simple... Um, yeah, there's sort of four uh, steps to this one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But you can, you can make them as large or as small as you wish. Um, you know, people think headland management has to be this big, complicated, do everything. Mm. Well, it is doing everything on this occasion. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's... And to set all this headland management, you can do that sat still, static. Yeah, or yeah it's, it's all programmed. We can, yeah. we, can, we can change it and modify it. So back to the big screen again. Look at that. Right, well, while this tractor <laughs> is driving for us, let's discuss some of the changes then uh, that's been happening with you guys over the last couple of years because we saw a lot of changes at Agritechnica, particularly to the 6 Series uh, when we were out there last November in 2023. Yep. So there was a lot of changes to the 6 Series. Prior to that, there was a few changes to the 7 Series as well. Uh, well in particular, you got your new transmission. Um, so yeah, just tell us, What's been happening then? What's well, it, been up to? If, well, if I, if I take one step back from there. Yeah. We launched the 8 Series. That's right, yeah. That's a few years so, ago now, is it? Well, that would be the year of COVID because we had to, it was our first virtual launch. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. So that was 2020, we launched the 8 Series in September. So when we launched the 8 Series, we developed the new compound style transmission. That's right. So that was a big launch. Um, because we were aware that the transmissions that we were using the high horsepower tractors at the time was the um, ZF um, S-Matic style transmissions. Yeah. And ZF were uh, coming to the end of the life of that transmission, so we had to source a new transmission. Make, make a choice. So we um, went into a decision to develop our own transmission in coordination with um, CIT, which is the Class Industrial Transmission Division. That's it, yeah. So our controlling system, the CBT element basically. Yeah, wrapped up in your uh, casting. In our casting, yeah. with our final drive, our transmission, yes. Yeah. So we use a CBT element in yeah. it. So this compound transmission gave us a much better transmission. You, know, you can't feel any changes, any differences in here. There are two oh. ranges that are happening and changing. That's I, it. I can't tell you whether we're in top or bottom. Well, that's it. And like, if we just wind it back to when you had the ZF, so the ZF, was quite, uh, I suppose you could say, more mechanical based CBT. It had the four ranges in there. Granted, you didn't control which range it was in, you just chose a speed, but it had sort of four mechanical ranges and then the hydro element in between each of those ranges to, you know, make it all seamless from zero to 50k or whatever. Cor correct. Whereas this is just the two ranges, isn't it? There is just two ranges, yes. And it just chooses which range it sort of wants to be in. Absolutely. Um, so, as I say, the old ZF was four individual ranges, but they were, I call them end-to-end. -end. So the first range finished, and the second range took over, then the third range took over, and mm. the fourth range. But, you know, we were automatically changing which range you were in uh, through our control system. But there was, potentially, you could detect that change point. Mm. And there was the issue of maybe you just was working at that specific change point that crossover point. that crossover I, I seem to remember that when you're doing like every draft work especially in the i suppose you'd be in the lower range at that point and if it was trying to skip up to that next range up you could feel that so, that's exactly fishing about yep that sort of range change yeah yeah so, so this doesn't have that <laughs> <laughs>